What's up guys, Matt with Heiner Outdoor Living. We're in the Garden of the Gods uh, Spa and Resort uh, neighborhood and this is the equivalent of Colorado beachfront property. I can't wait to show you this one because this is over a year in the making which when we started the conversation and the design process. Before we get to the beachfront Colorado property, can't get too far along without noticing the water feature stones behind us. And so that creates just this nice centerpiece focal point to the entire courtyard space to kind of welcome guests as they come in to the front door. Um, and as you get closer to the front door, you're gonna see a little peek to the stack slates uh, spears. And that's just kind of, gonna, that's just a introduction to what's coming. Welcome to Heiner Outdoor Living. We're a team of yardists taking boring, cookie-cutter yards and transforming them into one-of-a-kind backyard retreats. Join us as we bring quality, passion, and fun to yards all across the Colorado Front Range, inspiring life outside. It's been a long journey. We broke ground on this one back in October of 2020. And here we are at the end of July. So before we give you the full design breakdown and tour of the backyard, let's rewind back to October of last year when we broke ground on this. And let's see where we started and how we got to where we are today. This property is unique, not just because of this awesome view, but the fact that we are up on this mesa. Uh, there's a lot of uh, like geoengineering stuff that's having to go on to this landscape and this pond in particular. Uh, the engineers don't wanna see any extra water hitting this native soil because they wanna protect all of this from erosion. And so everything that we're doing with this pond that's making this unique is we have to build like a double liner system, basically like a French drain within the liner and it all needs to collect. And this is why we've got this big trench. It's coming down here and then it's going, it's connecting into there um, but if you look down here we got this huge massive area here everything i'll go around to the other side where the intake is but it's all got to drain to there so this is going to be the main viewing area for the pond this is the whole pond area right here as you can see they've got the excavation going and we're having to make a french drain system we've got a liner and then under Underlayment underneath this is even more underlayment, but then a gravel system is coming all along here It's gonna drain all the way to where I just showed you the pumps and all the other stuff is gonna be right here This is gonna have to have every every piece of this is gonna have to drain into that So every piece that we do is gonna have to collect into this double system and then go into the drain around the corner over there and so you know there's this lower pond area and then the stream and there'll be the upper pond area so everything is gonna have to collect and then make its way down so it's adding a lot a lot of extra work not to mention we've also got no shelves in this um, i'll explain to that here in a second so one thing that we're experimenting a little bit different is we haven't excavated any of these shelves and the reason that is with this gravel system, we'll put down and we'll build our shelves out of the rock all the way around. And then we'll backfill it with nothing but pure gravel, just so we can get any liner on this double system that makes it onto the outside. Or if there's ever a future leak, it's just double protection that none of this water is gonna hit the native soil underneath it. The bog here is part of the filtration system where the water will get pumped into the bottom of here and pass through a series of gravel. These black uh, crate looking things are called aqua blocks and uh, these aqua blocks are going to allow the water to come into the bottom of these aqua blocks and the slower that we can get this to disperse and pass through this series of gravel uh, the better that the um, the beneficial bacteria can uh, do its job and keep this water filtered and clear uh, there's actually going to be four pumps under this system all piping over to the intake bay over there where Malesio is working. Uh, but this is gonna have its own dedicated pump here. Uh, then we're gonna have one for a series of some spheres coming into the pond here. There'll be some pumps for jets to circulate and turn over all the water throughout here. And then there's gonna be one where we're gonna have the falls start where that pile of uh, soil is where it's gonna go into an upper pond over there before it streams into this and then adds to this uh, bog area so we can have a grand falls into the main viewing area of the pond of the house here. 
getting ready to take this stream all the way this way <clears throat> where we will have ultimately it'll be starting right here going down into an upper pond area the office is right there and then it's going to overflow and waterfall into this stream <clears throat> come down this way and into the main pond portion over here hands down the most technical pond that we have ever been a part of and i don't know if there's anything that will ever top this but uh, we're always up for a challenge which is which is fun I have permission to just get more as we need it. I told him I was going to spend the budget and then see how far that got me. Okay. Um, and I'm there and I'm running out of paint. Yes. That makes sense. Um, and this section but I don't good. want that to look good and then it's like, oop, we ran out of money. <laughs> My goal is to have a lot of this rock kind of disappear with the foliage mm -hmm. after you know two, three years. If we could move all this inventory over there, then you have more. Idea. Idea. Yeah, then tomorrow morning I'll probably finish out that. The thing I get asked a lot is how many gallons per hour do I need to get that sheet effect look for the waterfalls. A good general rule to get that sheet effect of the waterfall that you see here would be, I would say, you know, if you just wanted some quick beer math, stick with about 500 gallons per hour per inch of, of sheet that you're going with. And that's going to give you that good fall or that good flow going over and get that glass effect that you see there but there's so many variables that go into it too because you know how high up how much head pressure do we have you know like at the end of the day we need to have that much volume actually going over the falls but if you have to pump it up a hill and you put a 10,000 gallon an hour per, uh, per hour pump and we're going up 20 feet really at the end of the day that's only going to be half that depending on you know, um, you know how much head pressure we have and the actual ratings of the pump every pump does have a, uh, like a graph where they uh, test these in you know in the factories and they actually put some specs to these so you can look at those things when you're picking out the pump and know exactly how much flow you're going to end up with at the top and that's going to be the same all the way down uh, but depending on how far you're going away from the pump source and how high up is going to you know determine a lot at the end of the day of uh, how much flow you're gonna end up with. And as you can see, when you're looking at it, it's adding a lot of that bubble and a lot of that air and that oxygen to the, the water, which is actually an integral part to uh, into the health of that building, that ecosystem. So the fish are gonna love it, the plants are gonna love it. It's, you know, so when you build this style of waterfall, uh, it's actually a, a good thing uh, from an overall like functional part too. This client in particular, he is a custom home builder. This is his home and this is his dream. And so to be a part of this, first and foremost, was, uh, you know, it was just an honor to be a part of that with him. I wanted to make sure that whatever we did, we were going to complement the view behind us. He was hesitant at first about putting in a pond because he had one at his current home right now. And so when I was telling him about the, you know, the newer technology and how we build our ponds, uh, it piqued his curiosity and I, he, he made me promise that as long as we could build him a low maintenance uh, pond that he was all in. And so as you can see that uh, we've done this and the water is crystal clear. This thing has been running since May and I mean you can literally tell heads or tails on the bottom of a dime right now. I want to share with you kind of what was going on inside my head. You know, why did the design come out the way that it did? This property is really wide and it's kind of a shallow yard and so I had to think of how could we balance the elements and you know work within the restrictions of the engineering we have a slight downhill from this side to that side i'm going to take you to the top side you know because i'm always thinking and designing from the inside of the house to the outside of the house so let's go over here i want to show you uh the origin of this pond in front of me behind the camera is uh, the homeowner's home office and so I knew that he was going to be spending a lot of time here 
making phone calls, working from home. And so it was important to me to make sure that I was giving him a view outside this to where he can enjoy the sound, maybe come outside, take a little break. So I started the water feature up on this side and kind of designed two water features into one. So the way that I work this is we've got these waterfalls coming down in the foreground, but in the background, we've got the kissing camels and the garden of the gods. And so we created this upper pond. And so this upper pond is kind of isolated from the other bigger pond down below but it is designed all as one unique ecosystem. With the upper part, you know, I use this as my opportunity. I knew that he was gonna have this big wall here and I wanted to get some elevation. And one of my least favorite things about a water feature is when we're working with a flat lot is when someone builds it up and creates what I call the volcano effect. It just looks like a big ant hill. It looks artificial, it looks completely fake. And so we built this up about three feet, just built it into this wall that's now here. And as, the, as we get the rest of the tree from the plants in, it's really gonna start blending and it's gonna look even more natural. One of the things that everybody's favorite is when you have a water feature with a bridge. You can't look at a bridge and not wonder what's across it. And so let's go across this one because it, it, it takes us to another unique spot to where we've got a closer, more intimate view of Garden of the Gods and where we're gonna have a, a bocce ball court for some entertainment. So as we come across this, We've got some steps down. And right now we just kind of have some road base so it's it's ready for the future um, bocce ball court. But we designed this to where it's kind of dropped down. That that allowed us to get proper drainage off this back side, but then we had to level it off on the front side so that way we had the grade at the proper height behind us. Now we've got these rocks in this natural setting to where drinks can be set there, people can sit down. So when they're enjoying this spot and they've got the game going on, they also have the view. I mean, let's just take a look at this view for a second and enjoy this. Another challenging part of this is, and I can, I can relate to this, is when you're building your own place and you're a designer and you're a builder, you have all these years of ideas spinning around in your head. And so you want to find a a tactful way to incorporate all those ideas into one space, one house, one backyard. Part of the things on that list was an outdoor kitchen, this water feature. We got a future bocce ball court going in as it continues to go down there. You know, we have this little space uh, over here. Let me show you. This is uh, inspired. Uh, he went to a trip to Argentina, and so down there they'll uh, dig a hole and they'll roast these pigs. And so we we uh, designed in this um, this you know, wood burning fire pit so we can roast some pigs. And so uh, they put this grate over here so it's, it's safe for the kids and grandkids that'll be coming to visit. Um, we've got this, you know, I can't take credit for this. This was part of his original design, but the fire pit, it is six single pieces of stone. He's got a great relationship with a quarry down in Mexico and where he can just give a sketch to this guy and he'll just make whatever he dreams up. And so, I, I mean, I don't, you know, I just wanted to point this out because this is a really unique feature in of itself. We created this destination area with these steps coming down, kept the symmetry going around the fire pit, and I really created a spot where they can go down here, put a couple of nice chairs, hear the water feature, see the view, and then even like we get a lot of winds out here, this is a nice place where they can be out in the sun but still protected from a lot of the wind too. The aquascape uh, stack stone slate spheres. That was kind of a, a change that I made later on in the de design process. I wanted to just do something that was going to be a little bit different and I wanted to pick uh, a color up on some of the accents of the like the window frames and and the light fixtures and so I contrasted it with these spheres not to mention the uh, master bedroom is down that way so I wanted to have something that had some sound so he can open the windows and the doors at night and hear the, the sound of waters a little bit better. Thanks for staying to the end. Really appreciate you guys watching along. Tell me in the comments, what would you have done differently with this property? What did you like the most? What did you like the least? And I'm just gonna leave you with uh, a little bit more of some of this uh, beautiful project.